the high ground. When Dr. Crusher is abducted by terrorists, the Enterprise has no choice but to become involved in a civil war. At the beginning, Picard throws out a ton of exposition to set us up. The Enterprise has put in at Rutia 4 to deliver medical supplies following an outbreak of violent protests. Although we're not aligned, the planet has enjoyed a long trading relationship with the Federation. Now, a generation of peace has ended with terrorist attacks by unstoppable separatists who are demanding autonomy and self-determination for their homeland on the Western continent. Recreational shore leave has been prohibited, and all away teams have been instructed to beam down armed. Basically, a non-Federation planet is under attack by terrorists. A group of separatists is fighting for their rights against what they perceive as an oppressive government. Because of the conflict on the planet, Picard says that recreational shore leave is prohibited, but the very first thing we see is Crusher and Worf having lunch. I know they're there for something else, but it was a poor juxtaposition of narration and visuals. Agreed. It was a little weird seeing Worf and Beverly together down on the planet. We don't really see them interact that much. There's a big explosion. Dr. Crusher ignores everyone who tells her to leave and attempts to treat the wounded. I get her viewpoint, but at that moment there are other solutions. She hasn't even given instructions to anyone around her that could help. All of a sudden, one of the terrorists flashes in and abducts Beverly. I liked how everyone on this planet had those gray stripes in their hair. It's a genetic thing. <laughs> Once I noticed it, it was very distracting. Somebody working on this episode must have been a huge fan of Rogue. I also like the one dude who acts like he's frozen in place, the way his arm is kind of held in that weird way, but he's not. He acts like somebody used like a freeze ray, but that's not what happened. Maybe he read the wrong script. <laughs> <laughs> the Separatists are led by a man named Finn, played by Richard Cox, who was not in Robocop 2, so I really don't care what else he was in. Wesley is assigned to figure out a way to track the terrorists' movements because the way they warp in is unorthodox and they don't know how to track it initially. Wesley apparently has to have things explained to him like he's a little kid. The innocent often become pawns in conflicts of this type, Wes. I was glad they let him be involved in some way. I kind of forgot that they were related until they did that. <laughs> the way they talk about the situation with the Ansada Separatists it always sounds like they're the ones on the right side, but the Federation doesn't seem to sympathize with them. It made it pretty obvious to me from the start where the episode was going to go. Yeah, I don't think there was a horse high enough for this episode, but they tried their best. Picard and Riker meet with the authorities, they get one of the mobile transporter things, and reject giving the Rutian government Federation weapons to help root out the Separatists. The Rutian head of security describes the Ansadas as animals, they could just as easily have shot her where she stood. Didn't we already establish that Beverly's a hostage? Picard's comment doesn't really make sense. The Separatists are hiding in caves, and Beverly breaks her silence and starts talking to Finn, who is dressed like an art professor. Man, now that you say that, yeah, I hate him even more now. The authorities lump everyone who isn't on their side into the terrorist side. We suspect the organization itself only to consist of some 200 members. There are over 5,000 names on this list. And then Finn fits into his role as an art professor by showing that he likes to draw. He tells Beverly that she was kidnapped because his people need medical help and the Federation only helps the Rudians, but she says that they're not allied to either side. She determines that their DNA has been affected by the inverter, which is what they use to teleport. Beverly and Finn are arguing their viewpoints, and when Finn calls out the Federation for strong-arming different societies in the name of doing good, that immediately made me think of the previous episode where the Enterprise completely destroyed a civilization and left shaking hands and smoking cigars, leaving a complete mess behind them. And now that you enjoy the comfort that has come from their battles, their killing, you frown on my immorality? When Beverly's examining the injured Ansadans, their acting is very convincing. There's one conversation Riker's having with the head of security, and I know it was a heavy conversation, but I was distracted by the light that looked like an over-easy egg. <laughs> <laughs> Finn tells Beverly that he will destroy the Enterprise to get Starfleet's attention, and I really like Gates McFadden's acting in the scene. And then we immediately cut to an Ansadan teleporting onto the Enterprise, and we get acting from the opposite end of the spectrum. Ah! Oh. Ah! 
the weapons in this episode are much more stereotypical sci-fi than what the show has tried to show us so far. I think it's an improvement. And Picard eloquently lets them know how he feels about them warping up onto their ship. The Ansadans plant an explosive device and then leave. So Jordy tells the transporter room operator to lock onto his signal, and then he attaches his comm badge to the explosive so that gets beamed out into space. Picard ends up getting taken to the Ansada base, where he argues with Finn, and Finn totally calls out the Federation for being the Federation. The Federation has a lot to admire in this. But there's a hint of moral cowardice in your dealings with non-aligned planets. You're doing business with a government that is crushing us, and you say you're not involved. You're very, very much involved. Then Beverly defends Finn's actions, even though she has absolutely no reason to be on his side, which Picard even points out. But he did have reasons. The medical supplies, the arrests. Jean-Luc, if we really examined our role in all this, we Beverly, would... you were arguing for a man who may have murdered your son. Finn explains his plan to Picard and Beverly, and it matched the plot of the Vengeance Factor to a T. The Federation will quickly tire of our little war. Her raids have made this sector unsafe. They've ransacked our research facilities. Our trade routes have been disrupted. They will want to get as far from Rutia as they can. In 20 days, I hope to be very far from here. Eventually, the Federation will force the government into making concessions. This problem affects us all. It cannot be ignored. And then a few more. You have no choice. Prepare to receive us. We are beaming on board. The cart out. And then a few more. If the situation were reversed, I'm sure you would be demanding equal levels of representation. Until we can finally reach an honorable agreement that saves face for all sides. Wesley figures out a way to find the inside of base. So an away team manages to beam down. Meanwhile, Beverly is having a conversation with Finn that doesn't make any sense. And it ends with him giving her some drawings of her and her eyes that were clearly printed out. And later, when she shows it to Picard, we see that the same drawings are in there multiple times, just flipped. The team beams down and cuts the power, right as Beverly is about to tell Picard something important. There are some things I want to tell you, in case we don't get out of this. Probably that she's not a real doctor. <laughs> Finn runs in to shoot Picard, but the head of security shoots him in the back first. Riker says that she didn't have to kill him, and she makes a very heavy-handed and emotionally vacant response. But the death toll might go down, at least in the short term. And then we get some more super heavy-handed dialogue. It never ends. Maybe the end begins with one boy putting down his gun. And then we end with a dumb, everybody's happy again ending, even though a bunch of people died and the conflict was not resolved. I liked in the end how only Wesley seems to be happy to see Beverly. Everyone else acts like they didn't even know she was gone. And I also found it funny that she needed to be in the end shot, but it seems like nobody thought about that beforehand. So she has to sit on that little quarter chair way off to the side behind everyone else. <laughs> the high ground. Overall, every aspect of the conflict in this episode was extremely shallow and in some cases just straight up didn't make any sense. Instead of presenting things in a genuine way where we as the audience are torn between both sides, everyone just comes off as an asshole and I never cared who was going to win. Beverly's sympathy with Finn in particular was underdeveloped and didn't come to anything. It was kind of cool to see terrorists attacking the Enterprise, but all the no-name characters in this episode were terribly acted, which strikes me as probably a directorial issue. There was so much potential for real moral quandaries and interesting political conflict, but it was so half-assed that it just ended up being frustrating and boring. I would give this episode a D. I give this one D plus. I agree with everything you said, but I also felt like someone used the previous episode as a practice run for this one. It was put together much better mechanically, but still not deep at all. And to be honest, it didn't even really feel like an episode of Star Trek. It could have been the plot to a bunch of shows without skipping a beat. However, I did enjoy the crew being called out for pulling all the shit they pull all the time, which I know we, ourselves, have griped about more than a few times. Finn was a straight sociopath. Um, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> and the only reason it gets a D plus instead of a D was Picard kicking some ass. 